it is that time. We are very happy with it being week one. It just feels oh, like man. football to bring in our guy, Brian Baldinger, with the Baldy's Breakdown t-shirt and everything. That logo is outstanding. Mm-hmm. Baldy, I was hoping that you'd be in a Speedo from Brazil, but we'll, we'll settle for the t-shirt. <laughs> you know, you're, you're enjoying yourself here. I, I Full vacation mode I was hoping for. I'm just telling you, I just got out of the water, and I just rode this wave. The current swept me down the beach a half a mile. I had to walk back, make sure I got here in time. But, I mean, you talk about, like, needing to wake up after a flight. Like, I'm awake. I'm ready to go right now. That's awesome. So, That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hit – we'll hit on, uh, on the game in Brazil on Friday night before um, we get out of here. But, obviously, being a Bears show, we saw sure. you. I think the cameras actually caught you at one point. Talking to Caleb, is that all the way back at the Hall of Fame game? I think it was. Yeah. Uh, you obviously yeah, have a relationship with him, too. Just curious of what you, you know, your conversations with him, what you saw in the preseason, how you're feeling about Caleb Williams going in his first NFL start this Sunday. I feel good about him. I like, you know, I've always liked Caleb. Um, I got, I met him when he was at Gonzaga High School and he was probably 17 in this uh, quarterback collective uh, clinic that we were doing. And he was like, he was just a, a great kid. He was really understood the game. He knew how to attack coverages. Like he was just pretty advanced without being cocky or arrogant or anything. He just understood concepts. And then when I saw him at the Hall of Fame, you know, in Canton this summer, you know, he was going to play, but he was throwing to his receivers, Rome and, you know, DJ and, and to uh, Keenan. And he was just, you know, he was just having fun. But I know football is a business and we got to take it as a business, but like that guy's having fun playing. And, um, uh, I, you know, I thought that second preseason game, he was really, really good, um, especially some of the splash plays that he made that people said he can't do in the NFL. I get it. It's just preseason. But he's got a lot of confidence in himself. And I think the team around him is pretty good. I'm not, I'm not I don't, you know, people are always saying, you know, can he be C.J. Stroud? I don't know. C.J. Stroud, he didn't start off like the, you know, offensive rookie of the year. He finished like it. It took him a while to get there. Uh, but, you know, what happens to these quarterbacks are Nico Collins was nothing before C.J. Stroud got there. I mean, literally two years, didn't put up many numbers. Last year, he led the whole NFL when he was a single receiver in, in receiving yards. Like, he fed him. He went to him. He trusted him. And that's what I'm kind of looking to see in this passing game. Like, who's the guy that he's going to really trust? Is it one guy over another? Sometimes it's, it's not even a favoritism thing. It's just that guy I know is going to get open. I, I'm, he's going to be where he needs to be. Those We're going to find some of that stuff out on Sunday against Tennessee, but I'm, I'm interested to see his development and who he starts to lean on as time goes on. It's interesting that you're showing confidence in the Bears' offensive line, Baldy. So I'm assuming that between the – you know, you went in the trenches here. If you're great in the Bears, are you more confident in the O-line or the D-line? I, I would say more, more, a little more confident in the offense line at this point. I know they they traded for Daryl Taylor. I loved him coming out of Tennessee. I thought it was a great trade. I can't believe Tennessee or J- Seattle gave him up because I think he's a quality rusher off the edge. But I think they have less question marks about the offense line to me right now, provided everybody's healthy. And I don't know Nate Davis where he's at right now. But I mean, if they got all five guys up there, I have more confidence in the offensive line. Well, you you know you obviously we love hearing you break down the trenches when you do your baldy breakdowns. I don't think anything gets you more amped up than the trenches. So, you know, what did you see from Austin Booker here in the preseason, and your expectations on how quickly he can contribute? You know, to that defensive line group. It's hard. It's hard for a young defensive lineman to to really contribute. Not many do. Not many put up. Uh, you know, Aiden Hutchinson, you look at him in his rookie year, you know, rookie year versus second year. I mean, pick a guy. And I'm not comparing him to, to you know, Aiden Hutchinson. But it's, it's just hard. It's just such a different scheme. You're seeing elite players on the edge every week. And if he isn't elite and he's having struggling, there's going to be some law, some level of um, attention being given to that guy. I mean, Jalen Carter was as good as any defensive tackle in the league the first eight weeks last year, 10 weeks. And then he, he like literally disappeared. Um, all of a sudden people started doubling him every play. And he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't find the quarterback the last six weeks of the year. 
Uh, teams just said, okay, that's the guy that we got to take care of. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case with him. But, you know, it's just it's different schemes. People don't run power. People don't play with tight ends. People don't play with two tight ends in college. Like, it's just different. Like, I know that Big 12 conference where he came from in Kansas, like, nobody plays with a tight end in the Big 12. They play four wide receivers. Every defense is the same. It's a 3-3 double cloud. Like, they all basically play the same defense every week. And so it's just going to be a lot different for him. Uh, and it's going, to be a, it's going to be a learning curve. But I do think he, he has length, all right, something that you look for. It looks like he can bend the corner pretty good at this point. But he's just going to see, like, he's going to go up when he gets get on the field, son. He's going to go up against his J.C. Latham. You know, their first pick at Tennessee. Um, that guy is a monster, man. Like, he's 340 pounds and he can move and he's got a punch. Like, he looks like he's ready to go. That's going to be a good test, you know, rookies against rookies on Sunday. So we know that the Bears toyed with the idea last year of moving Bayless Jones to running back. They ended up not doing it. He was sort of used sporadically out of the backfield a few times, but they didn't really go all in on it. And this coaching staff that's come in has clearly been more receptive to that idea. This has been sort of a last resort situation for him. I don't know if he would have made the team otherwise – but he moves the running back. They go all in on it. We saw in hard knocks last night that even the Bears, I think, front office was shocked at how well he took to it. And now he's on this roster. I know you did a baldy breakdown watching Valus Jones at running back. What did he show you at the position? Well, he's, he showed the ability to make instant cuts and to see the hole. I mean, you know, he trusted his eyes. But then, you know, he had two 30-plus yard runs in that last preseason game. He showed an explosive element. Now, we always knew coming out of Tennessee he could run. But I didn't know that he had contact bounce, that he had that kind of vision, short area type of burst and vision that you got to have at the running back position. You can't dance around waiting for a hole to open. you got to be able to see. He see it seems like he sees it pretty fast. Now, it's a, it's a talented running back room. I don't know how much room there is. Nobody keeps four running backs active on a Sunday. So I don't know if he's going to be active or not unless there's a big special teams play for him, which would get him active. But I would say Rashawn and Khalil, I, I would say they're ahead of him right now. But you have to kind of see what he could do against a real defense. Tennessee's got a great defensive front. you got to kind of test him and see if he, if he has those kind of explosive runs in him. I hope they give him an opportunity, and we'll, we'll see. So, Bali, what, what would you tell Bears fans if they're, when they're trying to figure out if Caleb has quote unquote arrived, like what would you be looking for to think like, all right, he's got it. He's seeing it. Well, you're always looking for consistency. You know, you're always looking week in, week out. Can he play at a, a pretty consistent level? Um, I think you're going to see a lot of splash plays from Caleb. What you hope you don't see is the plays that turn the ball over are poor decisions because he's trying to do too much. Those kind of things. Um, and so a lot of there's a learning curve there for some players. Sometimes it's not there. But I would say, can you find some level of consistency where, you know, by the fourth week of the season, by the time we get to October, we pretty much know what he's going to give us and whatever that is, you know, and then if we could just see incremental improvement, whether it's ball placement or seeing the blitz quicker. The one thing that he told me that day, you know, in Canton was, now, he never really had to do the run game at either Oklahoma or USC. The quarterback basically is reading the box on some of these check with me's where it's a run pass type thing. And knowing that if it is a run because it's a light box or, you know, they've got a dime defense out there with one linebacker and one defensive back, you know, is this a good chance on second and five to go run it again? Like he's, he's learning how to do that right now. He never had like, that all came from the sideline before it came from Lincoln. And so that's something that I know he was, I'm not saying he was struggling with it, but it was something that he had to work on. So there's a lot of little things that might not show up in the box score that you're looking for from has he arrived to is he getting you out of a bad play? Is he getting you to a right play? Is he calling the run to the right side? If, it is, if he does call the run, those little things that we may never know unless, you know, I don't, I don't think these things are coming out of any Chicago Bear press conference. Um, that I've seen, you know, this summer or in past years. But I would say that that's something that I would be looking forward to. 
Well, let's reverse engineer this then. You talk about his responsibilities on that side of the ball. But if you were a defensive coordinator, seeing what you've seen so far, how would you try to attack Caleb Williams to make him uncomfortable? Because I feel like his dual threat leads to, you know, my simple answer is just blitz the hell out of him and hope that he, you know, gets confused and speeds his clock up. But what would you do? Well, I would disguise everything as much as I possibly could. I might give him just a cover two shell up into the snap, and then we're rotating, we're moving. We're going to dictate what we're in, whether it's a matchup zone, man zone, whether we're doing a fire X and dropping an end. You know, I mean, I would I would wait and not – I wouldn't give him any pictures before the snap. That's – now, not everybody can do that. Baltimore was great at it last year, and they had the best defensive football, and they led the league in sacks and turnovers. Not everybody can teach it like that. Some players, you know, need, need – on defense can't – operate that way but that's that's one of the things I would do and I would do that I would stem late on the defensive front you know where uh, offensive the offensive line might get confused a little bit about blocking assignments I know when defensive tackles or defensive ends were moving at the snap for me it, you know it, it forced me to think more than I wanted to at that point and you wouldn't mess up your assignments a little bit so that's one of the things I would do to Caleb early on um, just to see how he handled that so, obviously, you know, rookie quarterback first start. There's always going to be questions with that, as good as Caleb has looked and seemingly impressed everybody around the Bears. On the other side of this matchup, where you at on Will Levis right now and, and what he's bringing to the table? And I, I'm sure in Tennessee they got to be worried about him potentially turning the ball over in this game, going up against what is clearly a very, very strong Bears secondary. Well, I got a chance last year. I did a – a national radio Westwood one Monday night game, Miami and Tennessee last year. And I, I got a chance to really watch him up close, talk to him before the game. I um, mean, he, he looks like he's built out of a block of granite. He looks like, you know, uh, I don't know, like he should be in some, you know, in some glass case, you know, like, and so he, he's not afraid to take anybody on physically. Like that's not, a, that's not what he should do, but he has no fear of doing it. But like the one thing you see is like, even going back to his days at the combine, like he's got a cannon. Like, there's no place on the field that he can't get the ball to, no matter. So, any, however late in the progressions you are, however much time he buys on some sort of movement or whatever, he can get the ball anywhere he wants to get it to. That stuff is clear. I think the left side of the line with Skaronsky and Latham is going to be really good. That's going to be his blind side. I think they're going to have a chance to run it pretty good. They've got, you know, they basically rebuilt their offensive line. Um, I think, you know, Bill Callahan is probably – either the first or second best offense line coach in his whole business. I think you're going to be a lot better up front. And if you give Will Levis time, I think he's got more than enough, you know, weapons to get the ball to these guys. Baldy, who's the best team in the NFC North? Well, Detroit, I think, has the best roster. Um, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a stacked roster right now. You go back and you watch them against San Francisco, watch them against the Rams in the playoffs, and you look at the talent level, and now you say, okay, here's Jamison Williams. In his third year, there's no suspension. There's no coming back from injury. Like, he should be ready to rock and roll. Jameer Gibbs had as many runs over, like, 20 miles an hour uh, of any back in this league. He's a home run hitter. And you look at them on defense right now, um, they don't really have a weakness. Uh, they addressed that, I think, in the draft. I think they got the best corner in the draft in Terry and Arnold. They, they look like they have the best roster. So – that, to me, until somebody, you know, knocks them off, they're the winner of the division, and they're the team to beat in this division. You picking the Packers or the Eagles, by the way, on this trip? There's a lot more Eagle fans, you know, that I've seen here in Brazil and on planes and in the airport. Um, they're bringing their, uh, their devotion to this team. Uh, it's going to be a World Cup atmosphere. I don't know what the field's going to be like. Some of these soccer fields aren't great. But I feel like the Eagles – are a better roster, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Green Bay go up and down the field on them either. I, I just think this is a brand new defense with a lot of defensive personnel changes and a new coordinator. I, it won't surprise me to see Green Bay have a lot of success. I, I think it's going to be a high scoring game, uh, but I, I picked the Eagles to win because I think their offense is pretty unstoppable too. Yeah, yeah what can you tell us, of, or what do you know so far about what the Packers change on defense is really going to mean? 
Uh, obviously, you know, here in Chicago, we always sort of have one eye north on what's going on really? up there. Yeah, what do you know about the new defense? Well, you know, Jeff Halfley, you know, he, he coached defensive backs in this league in Tampa and San Francisco uh, and Cleveland. He coached defensive backs for seven years in his business. He worked with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco, head coach at Boston College. But, you know, this is his defense. Honestly, he's a four-man front. He's not this multiple guy that's going to drop Rashawn Gary into coverage. He's a four-man front. He's going to press on the outside with Jair, with, you know, Stokes, with Keyshawn Nixon. Um, he's going to rob the middle of the field. There's a reason why they went out, you know, and paid Xavier McKinney. They drafted a safety, you know, in the second round. Like, they want to rob the middle of the field, um, where some, a lot of teams like to attack, like the 49ers. They should be a lot more aggressive than Joe Barry ever was. It's going to look different. And, you know, they've got seven – former first round picks on defense. I don't know another defense that's got seven former first round picks on it. Now I'm not saying they're all great players, but they got seven guys that were taken Stokes and Jair and, you know, Cavante. And, you know, I mean, you go to Rashawn, like it's, it's a talented, it's a talented group. You think you're still going to see the tush push from the Eagles on Friday night, <laughs> uh, even without Kelsey there? I don't think so. And here's why, like, you know, the tush push obviously became like this whole, you know, th this whole phenomenon, right? And I remember talking to the offense line coach, Jeff Stoutland. I was like, so what's the key, Jeff? You know, like what what gets this thing? Why, why are you so successful? He goes, so he, he gets irritated when I ask him any question. So, you know, in his irritating fashion, he's like, you know, we were 36 to 38 on quarterback sneaks with Carson Wentz ball. Do you tell me what the common denominator is? And I'm okay, J.C. Kelsey. And he's just walked away. Like, okay, you answer your own question. They don't have Kelsey anymore. And so Cam Jurgens is going to be a good player, I believe. But I don't think you're going to – I don't think you're going to see it. I, I'll be – maybe they give it a shot and just see how he does in it. Um, you know, they've got 370-pound Mekhi Becton playing right guard. It's not a bad guy to quarterback sneak behind right now. We'll see how he holds up. But uh, Landon Dickerson's at 340 pounds. It's not, you know, two big, you know, uh, water buffaloes in there that you might want to stick it behind. But uh, I don't know. Like, I think we're going to see. I, I think Kelsey was a big, a big part of that success. Yeah, I just that was one of my f favorite storylines last year. Was just like, why aren't all these other teams doing this? Well, because they don't have the center to do it, and that guy's going to the Hall of Fame. So yeah. Baldy, we'll see you in New Orleans. The Bears are going to be there. You know it. We know it. It's <laughs> it's it's a it's a lock, right? I mean, why even play the season? I'm going to be announcing that game in New Orleans. That third week, third week of the season, I can't wait to get there. I think that's September 22nd, but I'm I'm pretty excited to get about getting to the Superdome for that one. I think Karma's, it's talk, fun. Karma's talking Super Bowl ball. I'm, I'm going all the way to the end of the year, ball. Yeah. February. Oh, he's, got the, the okay. right. he's got the Bears. I'm, I'm, I'm the Super Bowl. That's blanking here on the Eagles in New Orleans in week three. So yeah, my, my bad. Sorry. No, I would, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but you know, I, 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 like you're thinking Super Bowl New Orleans. All right, I'm thinking okay, week three. So. Um, yeah, we're we're on different wavelengths right there. Just hoping the field holds what, up. On what, what's night. the what's the game, Baldy, for you? I know you, you didn't talk Packers Eagles, but is there a game in particular outside of the ones we've talked about that has you most intrigued here this week, first week of the year? Well, I mean, all these national games are unreal. I mean, you think about tomorrow night with you know Kansas City and Baltimore. You think about Green Bay and Philly. You think about Sunday night. You know, Rams and Detroit. That was a 24-23 wild card win. For Detroit, the Rams had were knocking on the door. The Lions had no answer for Puka Nakua in that game. You know, and then you think about, you know, Monday night, the Jets going to San Francisco and all those storylines. Um, but, I, like, I'll be in Indianapolis week one. You know, I think that, um, that it has a chance to be a great game. Houston in Indianapolis week one. Division game right away. Anthony Richardson destroyed uh, Houston uh, last year in week two um, when they went down to Houston and whipped them pretty good. Uh, those, those are all really good stories. But, I mean, look, Caleb Williams is a story. Hard Knocks was a great show this summer. Um, Tennessee, you know, coming to town before Detroit is basically uh, – Chicago is basically playing the AFC South the first three weeks of the season. So, you know, do they get – you know, do they go 1-0 and o against the AFC South, you know, week one against Tennessee? Like, I, I think all those are, are fantastic storylines. Yep. I have a couple of quick hitters for you before we let you go. One is – do you have a rookie right now that maybe is flying under the radar that you, with all your draft prep, what you've seen so far in the summer and the preseason, 
do you have do you have a, a rookie that maybe no one's talking about that you think is going to have a big year? Well, I mean, this Dominic Pony that was a third round pick out of Kansas by San Francisco looks like he looks like their best guard they've had in years there. Honestly, and I know it's preseason, but I'd be surprised if he isn't a good player. You're talking about Christian McCaffrey led the league in rushing. Why not get another earth mover up front that just moves big bodies? Like he he looks like I know they had injuries there this summer, so he got a chance to play a lot, but he looked he looked really good to me right off the bat. And and we want to let you get back in that ocean, but um what do you think about this movement? You know, international it keeps growing. You're in Brazil right now, new place for the NFL. You'll have a much better idea than than us on you know how it all goes, but I mean, what's your what's your feelings right now on Brazil and just sort of this continuing to grow and grow and expand internationally? Well, I know players and, you know, even at our NFL network, like they're concerned about safety and all that stuff, staying in the hotel. I don't know. I've been in Brazil. I understand. I've been in a big city. There's issues. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of this growth. Um, you know, we we've, Jordan Malata is from the international program and finding players that played, you know, that are being groomed right now and, Germany, England, parts of Africa, who knows, South America. Like, there's athletes everywhere. Let's put the American flag in some of these footholds that are soccer, you know, soccer footholds. Let's see if we can penetrate, build a fan base. Um, We're not CBS, NBC, you know, ESPN anymore. We're streaming networks. You know, Netflix is playing games on, you know, showing games on Christmas Day. You can stream these things around the world. They're paying a lot of money for it. There's big income. There's big money streams coming from these international games. They all sell out in a matter of minutes. I did NFL Europe for 10 years over there. It was I lived in Holland. I lived in Spain. I lived in you know England watching the games and seeing the fanaticism of the fan base. They're all on the internet. They all watch all, you know, they're all playing fantasy football. Like we've got fans there. So why not give them our product there? Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, operations, travel, it's not easy, but give these fans over there um, what it looks like, a real feel for it. I'm, I'm a fan of the whole thing. Well, if there's anybody that could introduce football to the world, it's our international man of mystery, Brian Baldinger. I, you, you, you literally are yeah. the most interesting man on the planet, honestly. Like, congratulations. Did, what'd you do on the flight over? Any, any good movies? You, were you breaking down yeah. film the whole way? I watched this movie, I watched this movie with Russell Crowe. And, uh, you know, he had some memory loss. He was investigating this murder. Like, it had me. It had me gripped until my eyes just started to droop a little bit. So, uh, I don't know. I, I forget the name of it. But it was, Were you uh, drinking was, that little teacup on the flight, too? That I see. No, I, just, but I, I needed a couple of these in order to, like, I didn't sleep a lot. So, um, I needed a couple of these to kind of get myself going here. Something tells me you don't sleep very much. You're, you're always on the move, Baldy. Uh, uh, you know, that's like, like John Bon Jovi said, you know, we can sleep when we're dead. And that's a good time to catch up. There it is. That's what I keep telling these guys. You can sleep in March. It's football hey, season listen. now. We're ready to go. And Baldy's back. Great to have yes. you. I'm looking at what's going to go to We're going to do this every Wednesday at 1 30, then lock it in. Whenever you want, Baldy. You tell <laughs> well, us. No, I, I'm really sure. Like, honestly, here's my thing, guys. And I think you know this. Like, I don't want to talk about any team on any level, whether it's, you know, on all city or whatever, unless I've watched the game. So, you know, certainly by Wednesday, I'll, I'll have seen every Bear game by sure. But I don't want to come in here and talk about a game that I haven't studied and watched. So that's my thing. So Wednesday at one thirty, lock it in. Like, that's perfect for me. I, outside of some days where I, I got to do some things with some other teams, um, it, I should be able to make this every Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it. And uh, we always know you do your homework. You're locked in on really every game. But uh, we can't wait to have you all week, just like last season. No, I was just going to say, you're always locked in, Baldy. You, you ripped off every Bears offensive line. We went deep into the running back room. You were just, you're, you're, you're not going to down, my friend. Nothing's getting right, by you. Well, uh, let's just see. Like, you know, hey, look, to the Bear fans out there at Soldier Field on Sunday, like, um, I can't, I don't know. Like, you've been around all these openers. I just feel like the anticipation for this one feels a lot. I don't know the last time it felt this big to me. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe Erlacher and Briggs and those guys, maybe back then, but. This feels like it's the biggest it's been in a long time. Yeah, I'm so excited I'm going to throw up. So we're fired <laughs> up here. <laughs> All right. 
right? You do what you, you got to do your own pregame ritual. Do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, the, uh, well, enjoy your assignment Friday night. That sounds like a, like a lot of fun, and uh, we'll be definitely watching that game amongst many others this weekend. It's a great slate of games, and we'll talk to you next yeah. week and hopefully be talking about a 1-0 and Bears team. All right, let's do it next week. I'll, I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy it. It's going to be a lot of fun starting tomorrow night, so um, – <clears throat> Hopefully I can get to Indianapolis from San Paulo without any difficulty. Um, oh, I've been assured that assignment on Sunday too. I was wondering if you're, you had the double header going. I love it. Wow. Yeah, there might be, you talk about no sleep. There might not might be much sleep on that one. So All we'll, right, well, we'll, we'll just have a couple little, little cups right here. And we'll be ready to go. <laughs> there we go. Talk to you next week. <laughs> All right, guys, you got it. We all silly like the mayor. 